Hey guys, how you doing? This is Paul from Paul and Tech, and today we're going to be taking a look at the fourth and final part of the first time PC build. If you haven't seen parts one, two, and three, those will all be linked down in the description below, and you should definitely check those out before watching this video. Part one is basically why I'm building the computer. Part two are all the parts I'm going to be using in the computer, and part three is the actual assembly. Now here in part four, we're going to be talking about basically an overview of the entire project. I'll talk about some of the things I would have done differently, some of the things I really like, things I really don't like, how the computer actually performs, and I'll even give you guys a comparison to my old computer or laptop that actually got me started here on this YouTube channel. And I'm really sorry this video was so delayed, but I've been on vacation and I've been extremely busy with school these past few weeks. But anyways, here's part four, so let's get right into it. Enjoy! Start things off with the non-computer components, and I can tell you guys right now that I am extremely satisfied with all of them. First off is my Amazon Basics mouse. Now I'm not going to go too in depth with this because I already have a review that's going to be linked in the description down below, but I can tell you guys that I love this mouse, especially for the price of only about $10. I'm also really enjoying my keyboard so far, which is the Logitech K360 wireless keyboard, and I'll probably be posting a review of that in the near future as well. My Logitech Z200 speakers sound great so far. I still haven't memorized my monitor name yet but it's the ASUS VS247HP 23.6 inch display. This is definitely getting the job done and I got it for a steal of just $120. So as you guys can see, I'm very satisfied with the peripherals of the build, but what about the computer itself? I'm not gonna talk about every part like I did with the peripherals, but I'll just mention some key items. The EVGA 500 watt 80 plus certified power supply is doing fine and it was only $30 on sale. Another steal was my MSI motherboard at just $60. And I can highly recommend my case, which is the NZXT Source 210 for any first time builder because it wasn't too expensive at only $25 and it gave me plenty of room to work with. Those are pretty much some of my favorite things about the PC, but now I'm going to tell you guys some of the things I really don't like about it. First of all, the main problem I have with it is this weird boot up issue. Basically when I click the power on button on the front of the computer and try to power my computer on, it just boots into a black screen and displays nothing on the monitor. Every now and then I get lucky and it works, but it normally takes several tries and up to 20 minutes to get it to power on correctly. This is a very annoying issue and the only way I've come to bypass it is by holding the power button on the computer for I think six seconds and then that boots me into the BIOS where I can boot up from there. I've tried looking for other solutions but I just can't seem to find any. If any of you all have any recommendations on how to fix this problem please let me know down in the comments below but right now I just have to boot into the BIOS and boot the rest of the way from there. I found another minor complaint when I was looking for solutions to the boot problem, and that is that my case, which is the NZXT Source 210, did not come with a speaker. So it can be very difficult to diagnose problems with it because it doesn't have a beep code when it boots on. So I really wish that it would have come with a speaker. One more minor complaint I have is that my case, the NZXT Source 210, is very large. Now, granted, I wanted it to be big so I would have plenty of room to build with because it was my first time building a computer. I wanted to have plenty of room to move all the parts around inside the case. However, now that the build is done, it can be very difficult to move my computer from room to room if I wanted to, say, play games on the TV. If I were to build a computer again, I think I would have built it in a smaller case. Those are pretty much my major complaints about the computer, so now let's get into how this thing actually performs. When I built this computer, I wanted it to be sufficient for schoolwork, editing, and a little bit of gaming. I'm happy to say that this PC can handle all of this easily. Web browsing is very smooth and YouTube videos can be played with no lag at 1080p. Video editing in Vegas Pro 13 shows no lag even when editing almost 20 minutes of video on the high preview setting. 
As far as gaming goes, it's nothing too crazy, but it can handle Far Cry 3 on Ultra 1080p settings at around 30 frames per second, and Tomb Raider on Ultimate 1080p settings at around 45 frames per second. Compared to my old computer, this thing just flies. I was working with a three-year-old HP Pavilion G6 laptop that I got for Christmas, but it just was not getting the job done. Video editing on a fairly simple software called CyberLink PowerDirector was a huge struggle in itself. Even 720p video on YouTube was hard to play back. I can't even imagine how it would play games like Tomb Raider and Far Cry. I think it's safe to say that my new computer is a substantial upgrade. And just because I knew you guys would ask, I did run a benchmark on both my old computer and my new one, and the results were not surprising. I ran NovaBench, which is a free benchmark recommended by one of my viewers named Joel in the comments of one of my previous videos. The benchmark tests everything from the CPU to the hard drive speeds. My new computer scored a 1582, and my old computer scored a 293. To wrap up this video, I'm going to give some of my recommendations to other people who are thinking about building computers for their first time. First off, take your time. There's no use risking hundreds or even thousands of dollars just to get something done quicker. Next, make sure everything is put in its correct place, inserted all the way. When I first tried to boot my PC, it didn't even turn on because my RAM wasn't pushed in all the way. I think the most important recommendation I can give is to make sure all your parts are compatible. There's nothing worse than buying a motherboard that doesn't work with your CPU. I checked, double checked, and even triple checked to make sure everything was compatible before buying all my parts. This concludes my first time PC build series. If you haven't seen parts 1, 2, or 3, those will all be linked down in the description below, and you should definitely check those out. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up down below, and if you didn't like it, leave me a comment saying what I can do better in the future to improve my videos. And don't forget to subscribe for some more content coming from me in the near future. Thanks!